Welcome back everyone. Now we're doing regression analysis and we're going to be performing a regression analysis. Now the whole process is going to be listed on this uh, video so it's going to take quite a while but we'll take it in stages. So for this data we're going to perform the regression analysis and we've got birth rate per thousand and life expectancy in years. I won't go through all the data. First thing we need to do is to construct a scatter plot and calculate the correlation coefficient. Now you can do this on your calculator, we'll give you the calculator steps later. But when you actually construct the scatter plot on your calculator, this is what you get. And you can see that there's a top of line there and it seems to be a negative line. And just remember that the life expectancy is on the y axis and the birth rate is on the x axis. Now we're going to calculate the correlation and we find when we do find and you've been shown how to do it on your calculator we can see that there is a negative linear relationship and we saw that we marked the line in between life expectancy in a country and birth rate and that there were no clear outliers we did not see any outliers there at all as you can see the correlation coefficient are when we find it, again on our calculator, is negative 0.807. So we can conclude that there is a strong, because of that number, 0.807, being negative as well, strong negative linear relationship between life expectancy and birth rate. And we say R equals negative 0.807. The next thing to do is to determine the equation of the regression line. Again, we use the calculator to do this, and we're going to write this in. The equation of the regression line is y equals 105.4 minus 1.44x. Now, of course, we need to change these values. It's not y or x. Okay, so we have life expectancy. We're just going to put capital L and E for life expectancy equals the 105.4 minus 1.44 and we'll put capital BR for the birth rate. Just saves us writing all that down. So let's interpret this now. Let's interpret the slope and intercept of this regression line. Okay, now just to give you a bit of information, normally y equals a plus bx or y equals a plus mx, it doesn't matter, but b is the slope. Now the slope predicts the change in y when x changes by one unit. So if, we, if b is positive, so we've got a positive gradient, then y increases as x increases. That means as the x values are getting bigger, y will also get bigger. If b is negative, that means y decreases as x increases because remember we've got a negative gradient. The y-intercept predicts the value of y when x equals 0. We know that. To find y-intercept we always put x equal to 0. So for our example, the slope was 1.44 being negative. So on average, the life expectancy y in countries will decrease by 1.44 years. Decrease because of the negative, 1.44 being the gradient. So decrease by 1.44 years for an increase in birth rate x of one birth per a thousand people because that's what it said, birth rate was per thousand people. The intercept now, on average, the life, expect life expectancy for countries with a zero birth rate, because that's what the intercept is, zero birth rate, is 105.4 years, because that's what our equation had. Now, we're using the regression line to make predictions. We're able to use this line that we've just found to make predictions. Whether it, now, this example says, what is the life expectancy of a country with a birth rate of 35 per thousand people, because it's still per thousand people. Now remember our equation was, and I'll write it in terms of y and x, y equals 105.4 minus 1.44x. Now remember, 
Now I'm going to change them when I added in the 35. So I'm not going to say Y anymore. I'm going to say LE, life expectancy. And we should always write it like that. Equals 105.4 minus 1.44. Now the X value is 35 in here. We don't have to write the 1,000. It's 35. We just make sure that we've always got, it's in thousands of years, uh, thousands of people. When we work that out, we get 55, 55 years, and life expectancy is in years, so 55 years. So if we were to write this, we can say we can predict that on average, okay, sorry, there, um, we've uh, written that here so, for you, even though we just wrote, wrote it freehand, but underneath is the prediction. Predicts that on average a country with a birth rate of 35 per thousand people will have a life expectancy of 55 years. So we've written that out now. Our next stage is to work out, oops, sorry, I went the wrong way. Next stage is to work out the coefficient of determination. Now the coefficient of determination gives us an indication of the predictive power of the relationship. If it's a perfect relationship, the coefficient of determination would explain 100% of the variation in life expectancy. Because remember, it would be on a straight line. For no relationship, it explains none. That's 0% of the variation in life expectancies. In our case, we had R equals negative 0.807. So our coefficient of determination, remember we square the R, and when we square that, we end up getting, as a decimal place, and then we'll convert it to a percentage, 0 0.651. So as a percentage, we have 65.1%. So we can write, we can conclude that 65.1% of the variation in life expectancy can be explained by the variation in birth rates, which is what we've been used to. Right everyone, our next step is to construct a scale of a residual plot. Why do we need to do this? Because we need to test our assumption that we've said we, that is, it is a linear. You all know how to work out residuals by the definition. And the definition is written right here for you. Residual value equals the data value minus the predicted value. So the data value is what they give you, and the predicted value is what we predicted using the line. Okay? So, here are the steps to doing your residual plot. So once you've done your scatter plot, okay, and you've got your scatter plot up, and you have labelled your X and Y axis, birth rate, and life expectancy, and you do your line, you can have the equation of the line there as well, then... You go control and the back arrow, which will get you to the scatter plot. Okay. Locate stat reside and press enter to select it. And you'll see that you'll get this residual plot on the right. Okay. Now, what you can see all the data here with the residuals all over the place. There's no clear pattern. And no clear map pattern means that it is linear. But if we get something that has a pattern in it, for example, what we're drawing up right now, and you can trace a line around these dots, and you'll get an inverted parabola, then this pattern shows that it is not linear. Okay? Be aware of that. We have to get no clear pattern. And here is another one that is non-linear because we can see a pattern there. Don't actually draw it up the line, but you can if you want to, but you see that it's not linear. On the scatter plot, we can see that there is a strong negative linear relationship between life expectancy and birth rate, and R equals 0 0.807. There's no obvious outliers. The equation of the regression line is 
life expectancy equals 105.4 plus 1.44 times the birth rate. Continuing with our report, the slope of the regression line predicts that on average, life expectancies decrease by 1.44 years for an increasing birth rate of one birth per thousand people. Now I've already written this for you in between, we're just putting it all down as one now. Coefficient of determination indicates that 65.1% of the variation in life expectancy is explained by the variation in birth rate. A residual plot shows no clear pattern and confirms that the use of a linear equation to describe the relationship between life expectancy and birth rate is appropriate.